All right, so in this video, we're going to be solving matrix equations. Uh, we're going to be doing it using the multiplicative inverse. So if X is an unknown matrix, then you can use the concept of the inverse to solve for X. And some of you have already jumped the gun here and you want to know, can I divide a matrix by another matrix? And you've thought in your head or you've said to me out loud, I want to be able to divide a matrix by a matrix because I think it'll be useful if I'm trying to solve equations. So the answer is no, not really. You can't really divide a matrix by a matrix, but you don't have to if you've got something called the multiplicative inverse. Let's do it. Let's say you had an equation like this. A, which is a matrix, times X, which is our unknown matrix, equals B, some other matrix. Um, we need to be able to find X. We need to be able to find that unknown. Now, if this was a simple maths equation with numbers instead of matrices, that would be uh, really, really easy. So 3X equals 6. A is a number. B is a number. X is the unknown. Divide by A. And we'd know that X was 2. That's for numbers. Now, I've already told you, you can't divide matrices. Uh, so that's really not going to fly. There's also another small issue that we're going to deal with. And that is that if you were asked 3 times X equals 6, you could tell me that X was 2. But also, if you were told X times 3 equals 6, the answer would still be the same because it doesn't matter what order you multiply things in. But, and you'll find this out in a minute, if we do A times X, that's not the same as X times A. So solving these equations are going to have two small issues. We can't divide two matrices. The other issue is it matters what order you multiply things in. So those are the two things to keep in your head. So the goal here is to get rid of A. And the way to get rid of A is to use the multiplicative inverse. Because if I do A to the negative 1, which is the multiplicative inverse of A, and multiply it by A, something really awesome happens. Now, notice I'm multiplying A to the negative 1 out here or inverse of A here. If I do it on that side, I have to do it on this side here as well. A lot of us might be tempted to put the A to the negative 1 over here, over here, but don't forget that A to the negative 1 times B is different to B times A to the negative 1. Now, why am I doing this? Because the inverse of A times A is equal to the identity matrix. Ix, and we can just leave a to the negative 1 times b over here for now. Now, the identity matrix times any matrix, it's just like taking that matrix and multiplying it by 1. The answer is going to be x. All right, and you have this nice little thing here where a times x equals b. If you want to know what x is, Multiply both sides by a to the negative 1, but make sure that you do something called pre-multiplying, pre-multiply. When you do that, you get a to the negative 1 times a gives you the identity matrix, and on this side, you just need to multiply two matrices together, and you'll get some other matrix, which happens to be x. Now, we need to take a look at the other version of this. If we were dealing with numbers, this would be the same. X times A equals B would be the same as A times X equals B. Uh, but because in matrix multiplication, order matters, this is different. And the difference will be not in pre-multiplying, but you'll have to post-multiply instead. Um, and this is really, really important. Otherwise, your answers are just going to end up all over the shop. So... In this one, we multiplied by the inverse first. We, that was our first uh, term. But here, it's going to be x times a times the inverse. Okay, and then this one is going to be b times the inverse. All right, and that's going to give us x times a times A to the negative 1 is the identity matrix. And now we have B, A to the negative 1. So it's important to note that the answers are going to be different. 
In this one, x is equal to the inverse times b, and in this one, x is equal to b times the inverse, and those two answers are going to be different. Uh, but the procedure is essentially the same. You just need to remember this whole pre-multiply thing, post-multiply thing. Here's a more concrete example. If A equals this matrix and B equals this matrix, find X if A times X equals B. All right, so this is just a rehash of everything we just did up the top. Uh, and we can say that A times the inverse times A, X equals a times the inverse b, so we have to pre-multiply here. Now, a to the a, sorry, the inverse of a times a will be the identity matrix times x, and then the identity matrix times x is just x. Uh, and now we end up with an answer of the inverse of a times b. So, using those exact numbers, we can now say that x will be equal to the inverse of a. Now, a was 1, 2, 0, 3, so the inverse of a is going to be, I'll just do that real quick up here, the inverse of a is going to be uh, 3, 1, negative 2, 0, and then um, 3 minus uh, 0, so it's going to be 1 over 3. All right, so that's going to be the inverse, and you can see there's our inverse there multiplied by b and then we can take those two and multiply them together and then multiply them by the scalar because multiplying by the scalar first will give us the same result anyway um, now i suppose a small hidden part of this is what happened in the step by step there we could have and it just creates more work for us we could have written the inverse on the left hand side so we could have written over here um, one third bracket three zero negative two one times um, a which is one two zero three and then taken that and said it was being multiplied by x now if we multiply this by this by this we get an identity matrix one zero zero one and if we take 1, 0, 0, 1 and multiply it by x, we're just going to get x. So it's not really useful to us. We sort of do it theoretically and get it to this stage. x equals the inverse of ab. And then, and only then, do we actually do the inverse of a times b. Now, there is another version, obviously, the post-multiply version. And it's the same, the same series of steps. But x times a equals b, multiply that by the inverse of a. That will give us the identity matrix. The identity matrix times x will just be x. And on the other side, we are post-multiplying. On both sides, we're post-multiplying b times the inverse of a. Okay, so 2 times the inverse of a. And then we can just work our way through it. And here's our answer. Okay, so can you divide um, one matrix by another? No, not really. But for the purposes of solving matrix equations, you don't really have to because you have something called the multiplicative inverse.